Hey everyone and welcome to Skillcapped. My name is Dr. Zora and in today's video, we're going to be reviewing the eight best ways that you can avoid tilting that's based on science. We've all been there, you've had a bad game or two and you tilt off the face of the planet. It happens, it's a part of the game, but what you decide to do afterwards is way more important. We're gonna show you eight tips that will help you untilt and continue dominating your games regardless of what situation you're facing. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. First up, we have our question of the day. How often do you feel like you're getting tilted in Valorant? This is one of the keys to this guide, so make sure that you put this in the comments below and really think through the past one or two weeks and see when you believe you were tilted during your games. First up, we need to understand what is tilt. This seems like an easy question at first, but there's more to it than meets the eye. Tilt is referred to the frustration that a player may feel due to a triggering circumstance. Some of the big contributing factors to tilt are high pressure situations and overthinking. You're incompetitive, grinding hard to up your rank, and each match is difficult as you get closer and closer to your skill level. The stakes are high and because of that, the pressure can get to you. With that pressure, it can be easy to overthink a situation and develop uncertainties in your head that affect your play. You may not notice this in the moment, but these factors start to change the way that you play in a negative manner. Some common situations that you may feel this in Valorant is perhaps your teammate is trolling, you're losing a lot of aim duels, or maybe you're in a game where it feels like everything is just going wrong. Now there's one more point that goes into tilting. Once the frustration occurs, what ends up happening is that it alters your mindset, which then affects your play and decision making. You start pushing spots that you don't normally normally push, you don't clear areas that you normally would clear, you no longer feel like you can win the aim duels that you normally could win. Eventually, you end up in a state where you don't know what to do that could fix the problem, or worse yet, you don't even know that the problem exists. This is what tilt is, and now that we know what it is, we can go into fixing it. Speaking of fixing things, if you want to completely fix your play and dominate in Valorant, then go to skillcap.com to unlock our hyper improvement system that will teach you everything you need to blast through the rankings in Valorant. The link will be provided in the description below. Going into the biggest factor of tilt and how we can fix it, it's all about mindset. If we look at the top professional players in sports, such as Roger Federer from tennis, Kobe Bryant from basketball, and Tom Brady from football, they all share one thing in common, along with the very best players in esports, and that is their mindset. Ask any of the pros and you'll notice that they all portray a high level of confidence and mental fortitude. Every fight they take, they feel like they're going to win. Every strategy that they pull, they feel like is going to work. And most importantly, when the enemy players make a good play, the top players do an incredible job of first acknowledging it, but but immediately moving on and not allowing it to affect them. To put this in the perspective of Valorant, if the enemy pulls off a 1 vs 3 clutch that should have been an easy round, it can be easy to feel tilted and perform worse for the rest of the game. Once the mindset is broken, it's incredibly hard to come back from it, especially if you don't know what to do. With that being said, tilting will happen time to time and we're going to break down the steps that you can take to quickly untilt. But it all starts from having a good positive mindset at all times and feeling confident in what you're doing. Following that, in order to untilt, you need to acknowledge that you are tilted. Many players don't realize that they're tilted until it's too late and the game is already over. Like we just mentioned, maybe your shots aren't hitting, you're not vibing with your teammates, or the enemy made an insane play on you. Whatever it is, it's important to realize when you're tilted. Think about some of the scenarios where you've gotten tilted and try to realize when those scenarios occur. It's a simple first step, but it's crucial to getting you to perform the other steps of untilting that we're going to delve into. With that being said, different scenarios call for different tactics. This first one can be done for any any situation though and that is focusing on what you can control in the game. Some of the scenarios that occur are just out of your control. The biggest example being your teammates. If you don't have a pre-made 5, you can't pick who your teammates are going to be. Maybe there's a smurf on the other team that is absolutely owning you or your teammates are just quote unquote bad. You can't set who your teammates are or who your enemies are going to be and thus your focus shouldn't really be on them. We've seen this happen so often where a player is blaming other aspects of the game that they can't control which is putting less attention on the areas that you can't control. What you can control is your own play along with your communication to your team. If your teammates are doing bad, then you need to be willing to step up to the plate and make up for it. If you're playing against a smurf, you need to be ready to accept that smurfs are in the game and there's just an equal of a chance that there is a smurf on your team as well during the games, but you rarely notice them because you're winning. With that being said, if you work on your play and comms, which are things that you can control, you'll find yourself having much more success. For example, you may tell yourself, okay, there is a smurf on the other team, but he or she is only one player. If I can find out the smurf's position and communicate it to my team, we can work on strategies to avoid that player. We can then focus on taking out the other four players and force the smurf into unfavorable situations where we can beat them. This is just one way you can approach a situation, but the principle translates through other scenarios as well. Find the situation where you're tilted and then focus on what you can do to change the tide of the game. Following up that, revealing why you're performing poorly is of great importance to avoid tilting. If you find yourself tilting, chances are that something is occurring that's making you lose. A good way to avoid tilting is to change the types of questions that you ask yourself. Why did I lose a round? How did the enemy just 1 vs 5 clutch our team? What can I do to make sure that doesn't happen again? These are just a few examples, but of course they'll need to be more specific to the 
certain situations that you're facing. Maybe you're dry picking too much and taking unfavorable fights. Perhaps you flash a little too early and ended up blinding your team during the push. Once you have identified why you're losing, you can figure out what you need to do to fix the problem at hand. If you're losing the dry peaks, you're going to want to try to add something to those peaks. A few examples include using flashes to force enemies back or using information gathering abilities such as Sova's drone or Sky's trailblazer to get information that can help you pre-aim. Going to our earlier example, if you blinded your teammates last round, you now know that you either need to communicate more when you're going to flash or be more aware of who's around you when you flash. This ensures that the flash will only hit enemies and it won't blind your teammates or more importantly, yourself. The easiest way to practice this is thinking about what happens every single time you die. Perhaps your positioning was bad, you made a bad decision to fight, or you forgot to use abilities. Now next round, you'll know what you should do to try to adapt and conquer. We want to emphasize a very important point with this segment and that even when you're losing, there's always a chance for a comeback. Valorant is a very unique game where if you are better than the other team, you can carry hard. There's no scaling, no matter how ahead the enemy may be, they will still have 100 health, 50 armor, and an expensive rifle that you can also have once you've saved up enough money focusing on improving so that you can become the better player on the server. There's tons of research out there that discusses about your mindset and having this improving mentality is crucial to not tilting. You figure out what may have gone wrong and you try to fix that rather than just being tilted. These are just a few examples, but really thinking critically about why you are losing will not only help you improve, but will also prevent you from tilting during your games. If you take anything away from this video, it's going to be having this mindset for getting better. With this, you'll notice a huge change in your confidence and mental fortitude in Valorant. Now, like we said earlier, there are a lot of factors that you can't control in Valorant, and that includes having teammates or enemies that are just toxic. They may express this toxicity through many ways, whether it's through voice chat, text, or just trolling. If these players are constantly expressing this toxicity, we're going to be real here, you're probably not going to change them in one match, and the best thing to do is honestly to just mute them. It's negativity that you don't need to be constantly berated at you. And yes, you're going to be unable to hear the comms from this player now, and maybe they do end up giving some valuable information during a few rounds that you miss. This is a common reason that players are hesitant to mute their teammates, but we found through discussing with several top level players that the toxicity is just not worth dealing with for those occasional extra pieces of information that they may or may not have helped change the outcome of a round. Mute them and just move on. Sometimes you're just having an off day and are tilted to oblivion. You're losing multiple matches in a row and things are really looking grim. Most players will try to continue playing to try to get at least one dub for the day, but this is the wrong move to do. You're already in a bad mental state that is going to decrease your performance, thus making it more likely that you'll lose your games rather than win, which will put you in lower rankings. We recommend the rule of three. If you lose three matches in a row, take a break. Get some fresh air, go for a walk, work out, watch a TV show, do something else that is relaxing to do, and that will calm you down and reset for the next day. And yes, I said it, wait until another day before playing again. You may think, oh, I just did something relaxing, now I can go back into the game untilted. And sometimes this is the case, but usually untilting after being on a losing streak takes way longer than just a few hours. You may feel more relaxed, but you're not at 100%, and thus your odds of winning a game are better than earlier, but still lower than they should be, and you still have that tilt factor in mind. Because of this, we recommend finding something relaxing to do and wait until the next day to play again to truly go in fresh for your future games. This next tip might be surprising to some, but as we're talking about relaxing, we highly recommend players try listening to classical music. There are numerous studies out there that have shown a significant correlation between classical music and your mood. The structures and low tone of classical music provides an actual calming effect to the listener. To delve deeper into that, it's due to the release of dopamine, which is the body's natural happy chemical that improves the person's mood and also blocks the release of stress. There are plenty of things that people can do to relax, but listening to classical music has been extensively researched and is proven to be effective in improving your mood. You might be hesitant with this, but we highly suggest trying it and we're sure you're going to see results. Wrapping things up, this is something that's simple but difficult to execute and that is staying physically healthy. This includes exercising, eating well, staying hydrated, and sleeping at least 7 hours a night. In particular, exercise has also been an activity that helps in improving your mood due to again an increase in dopamine levels. The other three factors are things that most people do know but have a lot of trouble implementing. All of them help to decrease irritability and stress through maintaining homeostasis which is when your body is essentially in equilibrium. Everything is balanced and thus there are less feelings of stress. This it doesn't have to be incredibly strict where you exercise every day or only eat chicken breast and broccoli the rest of your life, but everything in moderation. Work out a few times a week and have a few decently healthy meals mixed in there. It's all about balance here and you'll notice improvements in your overall well-being which again will help decrease your chances of tilting and thus increase your ability to play at your best. This is an area that I'm sure people are going to hear and be like, ugh, as if that's going to help me, but you'll notice a lot of the top players in Valorant are actually on specific diets and exercise programs to make sure they maintain their health that translates 
tilted into better play. All right, so how often do you feel like you get tilted in Valorant? Let us know in the comment section below and make sure to track your weekly progress to see if you notice yourself getting tilted less frequently or for less time each week. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get more premium guides just like this one with one goal in mind, helping you become a better player. We here at Skillcat want to thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next. I'm Dr. Zora and good luck out there.